Today, we're off to White Crook in Clydebank, Scotland, where we meet 15-year-old Paige Doherty. She's a petite, charming teenager deeply immersed in social media, much like any other teenager. Paige takes on a part-time job for some extra cash and treasures her unbreakable bond with Lauren, her best friend since they were seven. On Friday, March 18, 2016, Paige stays over at Lauren's, a customary ritual for the inseparable pair. They spend the evening gossiping about Facebook, Snapchat, boys, and other typical teenage matters. The following morning, Paige heads out first for her hairdressing job, a good 12 miles away. Lauren's mom packs Paige a lunch, and after exchanging hugs and farewells, Paige sets off. Everything appears normal until 8.21 a.m., when Paige arrives at John Latham's Delicious Daily, a regular stop for her breakfast roll. Passing by the newsagents, she exchanges pleasantries with the owner, Ash, before entering the deli. Little does she know, within the next 90 minutes, she won't step foot out of that shop. Latham dashes out of the deli and heads straight to the nearby newsagents, where he swiftly purchases black plastic bin liners, gloves, and a bottle of bleach. Upon his return to the deli, he promptly locks the door behind him. Observers note him placing a substantial bag into his trunk at 10.03 a.m. Around noon, he drives away momentarily. only to return shortly afterward and resume his normal activities at the shop. The first to sense that something might be wrong is Lauren. Despite her attempts to reach Paige through messages, she receives no response. Furthermore, she notices Paige's absence from social media, a departure from her usual behavior. Lauren decides to contact Paige's mother, Pamela, to inquire about her daughter's whereabouts. Pamela tries to reassure Lauren, suggesting that Paige is likely occupied with work. However, Lauren remains uneasy, expressing her concern over the lack of communication from Paige throughout the day. Pamela attempts to calm her, suggesting that Paige might have forgotten her charger. Although somewhat relieved, Lauren remains on edge as she returns to her own tasks. When Paige fails to return home at her usual time of 6.30 p.m., Pamela's earlier conversation with Lauren sparks worry. She reaches out to Paige's friends and checks social media for any updates. Concerned messages from friends begin to surface on social media, urging Paige to return home. Pamela discovers that Paige did not report to work, a departure from her typical routine that sets off alarm bells. Despite being reassured by authorities that missing teenagers often resurface, Pamela feels this situation is different. Consequently, the police initiate an investigation into Paige's disappearance, acknowledging the heightened concern shared by Pamela and the community. As Paige was on her way to work, all buses on the route were rigorously checked, including CCTV footage. The bus drivers, friends, and family were all questioned, but nothing was adding up. Hi everyone, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and bell button.
It's free, and you'll be notified of each new video. And it really helps. On Monday around midday, Paige's body was found on Great Western Road, discarded like unwanted rubbish. The postmortem revealed she had suffered over 250 injuries, including 61 puncture wounds, 43 to the head and neck, and approximately 85 slash wounds. Detectives stated it was a serious and sustained attack. They revisited the shops in Rove and White Crook where she was last seen, re-questioning shop owners and collecting all available CCTV footage. What they found was shocking and undeniably suspicious. Paige was seen entering the shop but never seen leaving. The suspect was later seen leaving on foot. Returning in his car. Running to the news agent and back. and then filling his car boot with a large black bag. On Wednesday, March 24, the suspect was arrested at Delicious Deli on suspicion of murder. Paige's step-grandfather, William, recalled being in the shop about three hours before the arrest and the suspect asking him, How are you coping? During questioning, the suspect consistently replied, No comment leading the family to believe a trial was imminent. Letham goes back to the deli on Saturday the 19th, after hours, to pick up the weapon and make sure the deli was spotless. This is the CCTV from his shop at that time. Although the shop appeared spotless to the naked eye, forensic analysis found pooling of blood beneath the flooring in the back office. Along with specks of blood on a fridge and cooker in the same room. When asked in court how he enters a plea, he says. Guilty. Stunning detectives, the prosecution, and Page's family. He claims that Page came in looking for a job, so he takes her into the back office to write down some details, like her name, age, and other details. Realizing that Page is only 15, he tells her that he can't actually give her a job, to which Page allegedly responds. She's going to spread it everywhere that I touched her inappropriately. At this point, he claims he just lost it, saying that she stood up and began screaming, and he savagely attacked the 15-year-old girl. John Latham was given a life sentence on October 12, 2016, in the High Court of Glasgow. Judge Lady Ray will spare his testimony because there is no evidence in front of her to support your claim that it is not part of the agreed narrative or accepted by the Crown. He will appeal this ruling and have his sentence reduced to 23 years. What do you think? Did the decision to reduce his sentence to 23 years on appeal make sense? Thanks for watching. If there is anything you would like to see, let me know in the comments below. Until next time, stay safe.